Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm pretty excited about this next series of videos because it's going to be some good hands-on content and uh, that's something I've been kind of lacking on this channel. I'm not trying to become the next YouTube star or anything like that. I just enjoy making videos because I enjoy making knives and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. So this series of videos, and it's probably going to be something like three, I don't know for sure. Maybe more, we'll see. Um, is going to be on replacing this old thing. This, is, this has been my forge for the last... 18 years and I have not used it constantly over the last 18 years But this is the only forge that I've had except for a brief period where I was using a coal forge This is an old Valley Forge and tool brand I believe uh, it's, it's actually a farrier's forge and that's why the burners are aligned um, In this direction as opposed to lengthwise and so it's designed to have be able to put two horseshoes side by side in there and um, I actually was a farrier for a time, and I ended, actually ended up not hot shoeing, so I didn't really, I never really used this for its intended purpose. It works for a lot of different projects, uh, but when it really comes to blades over the length of, I don't know, eight inches, it, it really starts to break down, especially if you have a blade that's so long that you have to heat treat in at the forge as opposed to my 18 inch limit in my kiln. And uh, a recent experience with that really sort of pushed me to uh, make the decision to replace this. I've, I've wanted and needed a new forge setup for a while, but I've just been getting by with this. It's time to, at this point, it needs relined, um, lots of different things, but it's just not really designed for what I do mostly, which is knives. And so it's time to, to make this the secondary forge and build a new uh, more efficient, better designed forge for what I do. So I'm happy to bring y'all along with that. So let's take a look at the type of burners we're going to use because that's going to be the first step of this whole project. So as you can see, I carefully cleaned off a section of the table here and we're going to tear into this box. I got a number of pieces from SupplyHouse.com, which is a great online resource. This is all stuff you can get at your local uh, hardware store. So, as we get into this, I want to talk about burners really quick. In my extensive online education of forge burners, taught me a couple of different things, and um, it caused me to arrive at some different conclusions. So, we have a couple different pieces here. All right. Now, the type of burners that I'm going to be making are called atmospheric or venturi burners, or both. I don't know, I'm not an expert. I'm just making this up as I go along, largely. And so this particular design is what's commonly known as the Frosty T burner, because there's a guy who goes by the handle of Frosty on some of the forums that, I guess, designed this. And, and uh, lots of other people have replicated it. And there's actually some videos online that you can go watch, which I did, um, to help you understand how to put this burner together. But before we get into the actual burner itself, um, part of what I learned, uh, or more of what I learned, is sort of how these burners work. And essentially, all Venturi burners have some sort of tube body. They may or may not have a flare on either end, and some jet of some type shoots the fuel, mainly gas, propane gas, could be natural gas, into one end of the tube, and out the other end, a tube, or excuse me, a mixture of fuel and air exits, and this is the side or the end that exits into the internal forge, part of the forge, and it's ignited in there. Now, this whole Venturi thing doesn't actually start to work, in my knowledge, uh, until you actually light the fuel-air mixture on the other side of this whole system, because what happens then is the mixture expands and creates a different pressure, a lower pressure, which actually sucks or moves the fuel-air mixture down the tube. And at that point, it's a continue operation, continuous operation, and therefore you have a Venturi burner that's, that operates as long as you shoot fuel into this end and so forth. And so that's a very basic concept. Uh, hopefully I explained that correctly, uh, but that's the basic concept behind these burners. Um, not to be confused with forced air burners where you have some sort of um, 
powered source of air that is pressurized like a blower or something like that and it forces air into the system. Those are great too um, and generally used for applications where you need a, an easier way to get extreme heats such as melting steel and that kind of thing which, which is not the application for a forge so these should do just fine. Now the frosty tea burner is called that because part of the primary uh, part of the burner is a pipe T. Now these are three quarter inch um, pieces of pipe, eight inches long. This is three quarters by one inch. And so basically screwing together a couple pieces of pipe fittings, you have the basic body of the burner. And the way the frosty T burner works is we're going to put a hole right here to install the jet assembly in which the fuel shoots down into the main body of the Venturi and this is the end that is going to be ignited in the forge. There are two things that this design of burner does not have that I would like to see. M mainly one and, and we're going to correct that one thing. I'm going to add that one thing and that is airflow control and nozzle adjustment. So the jets we're going to be using in this burner is an assembly of some fittings and um, a MIG tip. Uh, for a welder, a MIG welder, 0 0.025 is what I'm starting with. And that's going to sit in here, essentially, in the center and shoot the fuel down through there. Now let's talk about jets for a minute, or the, the fuel delivery system. Part of what's genius about this design is that because of the various fittings that were selected for this design, um, there's, there's minimal drilling, milling, or metal shaping required for the basic design of the Frosty T Forge. Now I went and researched a whole bunch of different designs and there's any myriad of different designs of forge burners using um, pipe fittings or not using pipe fittings, any number of different things, okay? And quite frankly, they all probably work relatively the same. And you can use whatever design you want. But for me and my purposes, my budget, um, what I'm trying to do with the burner, this is the one that I settled on mind you, with a, an additional piece that I'm going to add, like I just mentioned. What I was saying about the, the fuel jets, um, you don't have to use a MIG tip. There's different um, forge burner designs out there in which you simply drill a very tiny hole or a small hole of the appropriate size into, say, the end of an eighth inch pipe cap, something like that. You can make your own jets. The reason, one of the reasons why I chose this design is because I didn't want to fiddle with making my own jets. I wanted something that was a specific size and uh, quite frankly drilling very small holes is rather difficult, especially without machinery such as a lathe, that kind of thing. So that was my personal preference. The main thing we're going to have to do with this particular burner is to drill a hole in the top like I mentioned earlier. So what we have here essentially is an eighth inch pipe threading on this end of the fitting here and then we have a quarter inch um, flare fitting on on the other side and the way that has to go into this piece is it has to be threaded down this way straight into here and this needs to be quite straight because we're going to come back and thread out the hole on this side that will accept the MIG tip and so this whole assembly threaded together is going to fit down into here so without further ado Let's get right into it. The first thing we have to do is determine where the exact middle and or center of this pipe T is on the top here. And honestly, the simplest and most accurate way to drill this hole would be to stick this assembly um, in a lathe and drill it like that. Unfortunately, I don't have access to a lathe at the moment and I'm impatient so I want to get it done. Probably most of us don't have access to a lathe, but more of us probably have access to a drill press and I would honestly recommend a drill press be used in, um, in doing this. Now, one thing you can do is buy a short three-quarter inch nipple and then a three-quarter inch flange and screw those together and that gives you a flat surface that you can easily clamp and hold this thing flat. One of the problems that I have right now is that the uh, parting line on this casting right here is sticking up and it's keeping this from sitting flat. That's going to be a problem when we go to drill this in the drill press. So I need to fix that right now so that this sits nice and flat. I think with some judicious um, 
application on the grinder. I think I can fix that up pretty quickly though. So you can see right there, hopefully, that I carefully use the flat surface on the grinder. It's not focusing, sorry. Um, to take off the little nubs from on that parting line right there. And it seems to be sitting nice and flat. I'm going to use a pair of calipers here to determine the middle of this whole piece here. You can also use um, a ruler very if you're careful. So we have two inches, 670 thousandths. So I'm doing math on camera here. That would be uh, one inch, 300 uh, ooh, twist. So one inch, 335 thousandths. Let's go ahead and lock that off here. And then I can come back over here and uh, carefully scribe where that is and that gives me the center of my pipe T. Okay, so that's where the hole is going to go. Now hopefully this parting line is in the center at the top of the apex of this um, piece. And I'm going to check that when I get to the drill press and I'll show you how to do that. But for now, I'm going to assume that that is centered and I'm going to put a center punch mark right there where we're going to drill that hole if I can get it in the right spot here. Okay, that's where I want it. All right. Okay. So that's where we need to drill our hole. So the size of hole we need is for a 1 8 inch pipe thread and that happens to be a 21 uh, drill bit which I actually had to purchase online because I don't actually have one. So the way I'm going to do this on the drill press is simply by clamping this portion um, in such a manner that I can hold on to it but that it's going to sit nice and flush on the drill press table. So that should work pretty pretty well. Just go carefully here and um, Make sure to keep everything straight. So let's uh, let's head over to the drill press. Now, prior to this, I came and checked the levelness, or I should say, the squareness of this table um, as close as I could. This is an old drill press; it's a little wobbly, but this table is still nice and square. And you want to double check that before you go to drill this, just to try to keep everything as square and straight up and down as you possibly can to check. Like I mentioned a second ago, we want to check and see if that's really the apex of this piece of uh, pipe fitting where I put that or right on that parting line. And the way to do that is to bring your uh, drill down until the point of the drill is just barely touching the top of your material and you can move your material, slide it back and forth on the table of the drill press and wherever the apex actually touches the very tip of your drill bit, as you move it back and forth to sort of zero that in, that is where the very top of your circle is in the center of that particular radius. And as luck would have it, fortunately, that is very, very close, if not exactly where the center punch is already at. So we'll go ahead and drill it. Nice sharp drill press, soft steel pipe fitting, drills very nicely. What a pleasure. All right, so there we have our nice clean hole and we're ready to go ahead and put our eighth inch tap in there. And the way I'm going to do that is once again, using the drill press to line everything up. Of course, you absolutely don't want to turn the drill press on or anything like that, but to use it as a almost like an inverted lathe as of sorts. This would be something you would do on your lathe if you had one available as well. You'd put your tap in the tailstock and and uh, go ahead and 
and probably not under power, but you would line it up and that would get things nice and centered. And so I'm going to use the drill press in a similar fashion. Hopefully I have enough length here. I have to move my table up a little bit. There we go. Okay, grab my uh, Tap Magic cutting fluid. Tell you what, there's nothing quite like the smell as Tap Magic if you've ever used it for. It's, it's uh, could be a gateway drug, I'm not sure. Anyway, put a little bit of that on there to keep your thread cutter nice and happy. You'll notice I, I took the uh, took my vice grips off of there, which I probably shouldn't have done that yet. I'm going to need to be able to hold on to this, but I'm just going to put the uh, drop the uh, chuck down there and start this. I already barely just grabbed the threads there. I want to keep this kind of pressed down just by hand so that I have that flat surface and that's what's going to keep everything trued up. Then I'm just going to work this down with downward hand pressure and start those threads like so. A pipe thread is tapered and so you're essentially always cutting um, so you reach the end of your taper. So I've got it started. I've got a, a few threads, maybe one thread cut and I'm gonna keep going. It's, it's cutting nice and easily you know with that cutting fluid it really really helps um, so I'm going to keep going as long as there's minimal resistance. Um, you want to make sure that you get these threads started good before you go to messing around. Um, generally speaking, when you're tapping a hole, you want to back off half a turn, you know, every turn or so to break that chip up. Um, otherwise, you run into issues. But I'm, I'm meeting very little resistance here, probably due to the softness of this material, the cutting fluid, and this tap has literally probably never been used before. So I'm going to go ahead and back the threads off here again. Not again, for the first time actually. You kind of see what we got going on here. <laughs> Looking good. So yeah, we tapped all the way down through and um, I probably want to tap about halfway up the the tap itself just to get sort of that general um, what's the word size I'm not sure I don't want to go all the way to the top by any stretch of the imagination um, but I want to get a little bit further up there so as you can see that's going on nicely by itself go up a little further here and because like I say, this is tapered, so we're cutting, it's actually making the hole slightly more, slightly wider, um, which is to accommodate the nature of the tapered pipe thread for our fitting. So I think that's probably adequate. I've got about a third of my tap left, and I think we're good there. So um, if I have any issue with the, uh, the uh, depth of my brass fitting, imagine I can come back and um, tap some more if I needed to, but I think that's going to be more than adequate. I'm going to remove the tap here. Redneck air compressor. And uh, go ahead and uh, move on to the next step. Sorry the lighting's not the greatest in here, but anyway, checking the threads there with this eighth inch pipe thread on our fitting, um, it's, it works just fine and it threads down in there and as you would expect on a pipe fitting it, it uh, snugs up in there because of the tapered nature of the threads. And uh, so the next thing I have to do is get this back out, um, is to thread the inside of the eighth inch pipe thread side of this fitting to accept our uh, MIG tip. Now, thinking about how to do this, and I think I'm going to employ the drill press again um, just because I want to make sure that those threads are nice and straight. And just a note on the MIG tip, a lot of these, in fact the actual plans for this I believe is a .035 35 thousandths um, size hole. I started with, or I'm starting with a 25 thousandths sized hole uh, because based on 
like I said, my extremely extensive research online, I believe based on my um, altitude, that is the, the, the better size. Okay, start. back of the drill press here, got my quarter inch 28 tap, which is the finer, the fine thread of the uh, standard quarter inch um, threads. And I'm just gonna chuck that up here and then let me move my table up here a little bit. Like I say, I'm just gonna use this whole setup here um, as a method to true up or make sure that everything's straight because if you got your nozzle pointing off um, to one side, whoops, in your burner, that could cause performance issues. And of course, we don't want any of that. Once I get some pressure on it with the tap, hopefully that kind of pushes it down. Yeah, kind of pushes it down straight. So now this is where you need three hands, obviously. But I'm just trying to keep this from turning. I'm not really trying to hold it, hold the vice grips all that much. So I'm going to keep the uh, vice grips from turning, put some downward pressure, and just start turning that chuck by hand. And as you can see, it appears to be going relatively well. Okay, so we've got threaded down in there probably plenty deep for the depth of the uh, MIG tip threads. Let me grab that really quick here and check that theory. Nicely threaded. Okay, so I want that to seat down nicely. You can see there's a gap right there. Maybe you can see that. So I need to cut some more threads. So pretty happy with that. So another thing I wanted to point out is all of the materials for these two burners, including the fittings to get the propane line onto it, was under $50. And so if you're looking to build a burner or get a burner, you really don't have to spend a whole heck of a lot of money to get a serviceable burner for your forge. I've seen these same burners for sale for close to $100 on different uh, online locations. And in my opinion, why would I ever spend that kind of money when I can take literally about half an hour and 25 bucks and make the same thing. But that's just me. Um, so anyway, we just need to go ahead and screw this fine little assembly. Now, I don't know, should I, should I seal that right there? I don't think I really need to. I think this copper, uh, this copper tip and this brass fitting will mate up decently. I think if I go ahead and tighten that down snugly, I think the uh, nature of, you know, the brass and the copper, it'll, it'll deform it just enough to provide a tight fit. And uh, worst case scenario, you know, it's, it's, right, it's right there anyway, so I'm, I'll just keep an eye on it, but I don't, I don't think I need to I don't think I need to seal that. Now, I don't want to tighten that too much, um, strip that baby out, and it wouldn't be any good, but that fit, fit down there nice and tight, and like I say, with the soft copper um, made into the brass, I think that'll be just fine like that. Um, you can probably try to put some kind of pipe sealant on there if you want, but I'm not going to do that right now. So then, simply need to install the fitting into the top of our T, and again, this, is, this doesn't need any um, seal it because that's not a pressurized at all. That's simply just a mechanical spot to hold this. And I'm not going to tighten that down super hard because we don't need to. So that's the uh, that's the top of the burner right there. The jet in there is probably um, not quite two thirds of the way through that diameter, very close to half. And um, we'll see if that all fits together and works for uh, my particular elevation and pressure. Um, I'm thinking it will. So like I said, I've got a quarter inch flare right here. And I just need to get that hooked onto some propane gas. Go ahead and put the body of the Venturi burner on here, which again is a three quarter inch uh, pipe nipple, eight inches long. And you could go from anywhere from, from my understanding, from six to probably 10 inches. Um, but eight inches seem to be a good length based on my purposes. And I'm gonna stick this flare on here, three quarter to one inch flare. Again, if you're going directly into the forge, you really don't need a flare in my, in my knowledge, uh, but for the purposes of testing this, I'm gonna stick that on there. And there you have it.
in essence, that is the Frosty T-Burner. And that literally took me about 20 minutes to put together, even while filming this, moving the camera around and stuff like that. And like I say, um, the parts that you see right here is probably $20. And then I got some additional fittings to try to get it onto some propane gas, and so you're looking at more like $25. But that's pretty cheap for a, for a burner. Now let's see how this thing works. So literally the hardest part of this whole forge build, or I should say getting the, yeah, the hardest part of this whole thing for me was to find the appropriate fittings to get from this quarter inch flare to my uh, propane um, source, which is off of a 3 8 flare. You, you'd think that there would be a simple fitting that would go from quarter inch flare, blah, blah, to a 3 8 but um, I was not able to find it. And if you are, then more power to you. But what I finally did is I bought a couple of these fittings, one for each burner, and this is actually quarter inch pipe uh, with an, it's an inverted quarter inch flare. Now inverted is backwards because it's the same thing as this right here, so that really doesn't help. Um, if you can find a, a, a proper female quarter inch flare, that would be awesome. I, I couldn't. So it has the proper threads, but what I had to do is I had to go and didn't show this on camera, but um, I don't recommend, I don't, I'm not recommending uh, modifying fittings, but in my situation, I went and drilled out with a standard bit that fit in there um, that inverted flare so it would match the angle here. And on final assembly, I'm probably going to wrap these threads with some appropriate uh, pipe tape so that that's sealed on their own. Normally the flare fitting seals right here where it meet, match, matches up and you wouldn't have to worry about that. But since I have modified this slightly, like I said, I'm not recommending that. Um, so don't go home and do that. But anyway, it screws on there now and I can use this, this fitting to get from, from here to here. Now I have some other fittings in the mail that are not here yet, so I actually had to rob a couple of things off of my existing uh, forge forge fittings just so I can go ahead and try this thing out. So I'm going to tighten down this fitting right here, this um, quarter inch pipe onto this quarter inch flare. And it's very funny because all these different fittings have different, they're very different. And, and, and just so you know, if you're not familiar, pipe is not based on the outer diameter, it's based on the inner diameter and pipes are different thicknesses called schedules and all this kind of stuff so just be aware of what you're working with because it can get a little confusing if you're not a plumber or something but all that to say I'm going to try to make this thing work This needle valve is actually any good anymore. It doesn't really seem to do what it should. But there it is. The forge burner is burning. And let's see what happens if we crank up the pressure. So that's 5 psi. That's 10 psi right there. It's amazing, I can actually feel the suction of this Venturi if I put my hand against here. It's pretty cool. That's a carburizing flame right there. Okay, so this is pretty cool. It actually works. Um, the design seems sound, seems valid. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to go ahead and screw on this uh, one inch nipple that I have here and, and kind of see what that does to change anything. So this actually adds more of a flare to this whole Venturi thing. The one thing I am noticing is that this, this, uh, this flare right here, or fitting, is, is pretty hot um, from operating right now. Um, that's fine. Um, it's going to be right up against the forge in practice. And of course, the flame where it actually ignites is going to be extended down a little bit uh, because of the thickness of your insulation in your forge. 
So to sort of simulate that a little bit, I'm going to add this flare and kind of see what happens now. Again, I'm going to turn it down to uh, about 2 PSI. That seems to be a little low. That's two right there. Okay, up to about four. Huh. Okay, so I'm learning about these Venturi burners as I build this. Now what I just did there is I added more length and apparently what's happened is it's not allowing the gas uh, air mixture to ignite close enough to the Venturi and create that lower pressure area and thereby suck the fuel down. So just by adding that little piece of pipe there, I've destroyed the whole operating principle of this Venturi. Very interesting. So things like that, that you learn along the way as you continue to build the forge and the burner and all of this kind of thing is going to be important. So how is that going to influence my forge build? Well, at the very least, I'll probably just have this fitting here. Maybe not even that fitting. Maybe I'll put the burner directly into the forge and let the body or the inside of the forge act as that expansion chamber to let the Venturi work. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, so I'm curious. Can I cut this nipple off uh, half here and will it work then? I'm going to try it. Okay, so for experimentation purposes and sort of to test the parameters of this particular burner, I went ahead, went ahead and cut down a second pipe nipple, a little less than half actually. There's only about a quarter inch of pipe left beyond the threading of this pipe. So I'm going to go ahead and screw that on. And it's just going to add a little more length to this whole flare deal that we have going on. And I just want to see if the burner will, uh, will uh, cooperate with that situation. It's going to give me a better idea of what I need to do inside my forge when I attach these to the new forge build. So I'm down to about 2 PSI right now. And uh, you know what, if this was inside of a forge where it could create a heat pocket to make that expansion possible, this very well might work. But in open air right here, it apparently is not able to expand that fuel air mixture close enough to the Venturi body to actually make that whole Venturi, that whole thing happen, okay? So it's not working like this, but it might work if it's in a, in a particular forge setup. I don't know. Now, just so I can sleep at night, I'm going to make sure that this thing still works as is. And it does. The next thing we need to do is develop. And I want to show you guys the idea I have for an efficient and useful air intake control system. And the reason that's important is because, especially because I plan to do a lot of forge welding and that kind of thing in this new forge, the ability to create, at the very least, a neutral flame and at times a carburizing flame is going to be really important. And what that is, is um, when you send that fuel air mixture into your forge and it's burning, it's heating up your steel as it does for forging or welding or whatnot, if there's any oxygen left over that hasn't been burned, that can and will react with your steel, create scale, um, things like that, which will which is, a, which is a nuisance even when you're forging, but it, it, it's a lot worse when you're trying to forge weld and that happens. So the ability to control that airflow to let just enough oxygen in, depending on the circumstances and what I'm doing, uh, but not any more than necessary, that's going to be important. So I'm excited to show that to you guys, which I feel is going to make this frosty tea burner uh, kick it up a level and make it even more... Uh, viable and useful. But that's going to be the second video in the series, partly because my camera battery is about to die and partly because I want you guys to come back and watch another video. So thanks for watching and have a great day.